Hello everyone, yours truly, Mr. Zulam Sticks here, and yours truly, you're about to watch Linda, aka The Gamer Girl. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, and thank you guys for watching. Hey everybody, Linda, aka The Gamer Girl here, and today I'm going to do a response video to Solid Nate, so we're going to take a look at 10 games that I can play for my lifetime. Okay, starting at number one is Sailor Moon on the Game Gear. I have played this a long time. I got this back in roughly around high school, college age. And when I got this, I, I heard that they had a bunch of Sailor Moon games for the Game Gear and the Super Nintendo and stuff like that. But the only system that I had at the time that was region free was the Game Gear. So I snagged one up when it was in Japan and I got it complete and this is a game that brings back so many memories of me first time watching the show it's brand new to me and I can always put it in it's a it's kinda like you know hard to read because of the fact that it's in Japanese but the one thing I did was I got it translated by somebody who's an awesome person in the community I don't remember their username offhand to thank them but they translated the whole game into English for you to be able to read, to be able to play it. So I can enjoy this for the rest of my life. I can never get rid of this one. I will definitely grab it at any time and play it when I'm just bored or, you know, just to remember Sailor Moon for all the awesomeness. Now the next game is kind of like a franchise in whole. Um, I have a couple copies of Frogger in different forms. I like the PlayStation one. I like the one on... Atari, but anytime I see Frogger, no matter where it is, I have to snag it up. I definitely cannot let Frogger go to Wayside. It's one of those, it's challenging at certain points, but you still have like the simplicity of you just move the frog to the next part and keep going and getting, you know, the female frog, getting all the, the bugs and, and moving away from all the obstacles. So I can play Frogger for the rest of my life because of the simple fact that it's a time filler, but also it still challenges me to where I have to think on how to maneuver around everything. So it's a mini little puzzle in itself. Now the next game on the list is no surprise. A lot of people probably would have had this on their list also. It is Crash Bandicoot for the PlayStation. I can play any Crash Bandicoot game. Now there is a couple that are like eh, but I can still play them. They're not like horrible in my opinion. To where I'm like, uh, I just don't have them in my collection for that reason. But any Crash Bandicoot game that is in the collection, I can grab it, play it at any time. This is the original, this is the best in my opinion, and it deserves a playthrough every so often. I definitely, for each year, play it at least once. Now, I don't beat it all the time, but that's just because I don't have the time to beat it. But I definitely have this in my collection, I definitely will keep this for my lifetime. And anytime I can, I will watch anybody who can stream it. You got it on your stream, I will definitely take a time out of my day to watch you stream because this is an awesome game. Now the next ones on the list were hard to pick because of the simple fact that all the Super Mario games are awesome and I had to choose because I could, you know, like Frogger, lump everything into itself because, you know, it's the same kind of game, but each Mario game is different vastly in itself and I had to choose so I chose Super Mario World this one is the classic that I grew up with I played the most I actually had the time to you know because when I was growing up a lot of the games I co-op beat with you know family members or friends this one I solely beat by myself and to where I can now say that you know this is an awesome game and I have it in my collection and I beat it but the one thing that I like about it is I can save this so this is a lifetime game because it has a save data option and yes I know a lot of retro games don't save and in my opinion I don't use save states but for me when I'm playing a Mario game it's hard for me to like be able to grind out a ton of hours so with this one I'm able to play when I want to at my own pace. If I want to stop playing this because, you know, hey, I'm getting a little bit annoyed with something, I can't. But the one thing is, is I'm not annoyed to where I will get rid of this game ever. 
it's one of those childhood games that brings back a lot of great memories with family, with friends, and just the first time seeing it on TV is what made me go, wow, I definitely need to get a Super Nintendo for this game alone. This, if I had only this game as a child growing up for the rest of my life and I didn't have any other games to add to the collection, I would have been in a happy camper for this, let alone. So this is why it's one of the 10 lifetime games. Now, the next game on the list is Popeye. Popeye is a classic in my opinion. It's one of those simplistic games like Frogger, but it's a little bit more challenging on certain levels. And I like the fact that it's really close to the story. And another fact that a reason why it's on my top 10 list that I will play forever is so many great memories with my family, so many great memories with us challenging each other, trying to beat each other's high score, laughing whenever we got caught, you know, everybody going, ah. Oh. So if I can always play this game, I will be fine with that. If that was the only one in my retro trio, I'm okay with that. If I could just have this, you will never see me bored. The one thing though is we need more people playing Popeye. So get your spinach kids, get going, play this game. I will say I'm not sure if they should remake this, but it's definitely a classic that needs to be on the Switch. I hope that one day I get to play this on the go with my Switch and I don't have to lug around a system. And that would be an awesome thing. Now the next game on the list is Power Rangers for the Super Nintendo. This is another classic that j -Love got me and I'm blessed to have her as a sister from another mister. This game I played and had a lot of fun with growing up. I loved the show so much, just like Sailor Moon. This was a classic that I always watched whenever I could. I would even barter with my family to be able to like, hey, I won't watch TV for the whole day if I could watch my, my half an hour of Power Rangers or my half an hour of Sailor Moon. This game was a classic. It was a beat-em-up that was fun, that it, even though it's got patterns, just like Splatterhouse, you know, you memorize the patterns, it's easy peasy lemon squeezy, but the one thing I like about it is it's not boring, in my opinion, to where I don't go, ah, I can throw this in the system at any time and for my lifetime would not get bored with it. So if I could play this all the time, I would. The one thing, though, is why did they make Billy kick the way he kicks? I guess it's for added humor. Makes the game even more funny. But yeah, that's my only pet peeve. <laughs> Because he's a gymnast, so why didn't he do a gymnast kick? He's like, hmm. <laughs> now moving on to the next one is a classic on the PlayStation 2, and that is Sly Cooper. Sly Cooper is a game that I found when I was growing up, and when PlayStation first started off, I didn't think that they could ever get a raccoon to be this cool. So it was one of those games that it had great music. It had a good storyline. The characters were not so cheesy to where you're like, oh my gosh, I'm about to throw up. This game was such a classic to me that I made sure that when I played it, I would delete my save state and start brand new fresh every time that I played it because I would enjoyed getting on the collectibles. They were, even though I know where they all are now, I still can enjoy the fact that I can play all the bosses. I still have fun watching people play it. It's one of those like Crash Bandicoot where you play it, you enjoy it, and you have fun watching other people experience games like this for the first time and go, yeah man, it's that good. Try it out. I don't know how many times I've seen somebody stream this for the first time and just the enjoyment I saw on their face made the stream 10 times better. So if you don't know about this game or you've never played this game, Grab it, play it, enjoy it. Yeah, it looks like a kid's game, but I'm telling you right now, any adult can enjoy this game. And there is also points in the game where you're like, hmm, that is a cool like reference or style of the, like whatever they did. And you're not gonna get bored with this. I'm telling you right now. Now we're moving along to a PlayStation 4 game. This game started off as a game that I thought I would hate, being honest. 
This game is a first person walking simulator style game where the character doesn't talk at all and you're going, why would I enjoy that game so much? It's because of the story. Dishonored is the game I'm talking about. This game started off with me as a love-hate relationship where I played it and was just like, ew, wow, oh my gosh, everything is grimy and gross. But then I'm like, oh, there's a reason why, because the world is different over there. But to me, this game, I played and I enjoyed so much. The second one, not as much. The Death to the Outsider, close second. But this one is just... A gem in itself to the fact where the characters and the story and how you can play it is so vastly different everything just revolves around do you want to do it stealth or do you want to do it hardcore go crazy and destroy everybody or you want to meet in the middle where some of the people you leave alone but you only kill the main characters there's so many days like I played this where I tried it this way tried it that way tried to beat it this way and I tell you, there's so many Easter eggs in this game that I was in shock by that because I would go into a little cubby or a little like room and stuff like that and there'd be somebody to talk to and have a conversation with and the AI wasn't always like the same repetitive story. It was literally like, there's this guy, take him here, do this, do that. There's an old lady. The old lady was crazy. <laughs> she was a nutty person but she was awesome and she was an awesome secret boss now that in itself also added to the fun was you had to save a little girl and that made me go wow and i've played this so many times that i'm grateful that i took the chance and just played a game that i normally don't play and this is going to be a lifetime game for me for sure now the next game on the list is debatable about some people like it some people hate it some people are like it's too much of a GTA clone but not awesome enough to where I could do whatever the I want but to me this guy he's got a little bit of a sass to him that I can't get rid of bully is a game that I found out about it and was given to me by a family member because of the simple fact that they didn't want me to play GTA. And I was like, ugh. Like many of the kids I used to, when I used to work at retail and sell games, many of the kids would be like, really mom, I'm gonna get this game? I wanna get GTA. I'm telling you right now, I'm glad that a family member got this for me. I still played GTA, but whenever family was around, I played Bully instead. And I liked this story, it was hilarious. I loved the challenges. Now, I'm telling you, I'm not going to grind it out and get 100% on the game anymore, but I did have fun with it, and I did enjoy that there was an arcade, a mini-style, like, stuff to do. I liked the fact that I could ride on a bicycle. I liked <laughs> all the craziness, all the, like, the clicks, which were so true based on, you know, the, the style of the game. And I liked the fact that even though it was based out, the team was in a different country, you felt like you related to this character. That you felt like, I'm trying to just get by and people keep messing with me and won't leave me alone. I'm like, this was so true going to school. You had times where you're like, I just want to be left alone. Please just leave me alone. So this is a lifetime game. I can delete the save state and start fresh brand new and I never get bored with this. Now the last game on the list is a crapshoot again. Based on some people's opinions, they hated the game. Some people loved the game. It's however you take it. This game I found and followed from day one when I saw the first trailer for this game and how nutty it looked and how out of the box it was and how it was a complete 180 to GTA. And that is Saints Row the Third. I have played this game so many times. I never get bored with it. I always play different scenarios each time to make it fresh and brand new. You know, save the building. Don't save the building. You know, do this with the character. Do that with the character. Change my outfits every day that I was playing it so that it felt like, kind of like Animal Crossing. <laughs> so I enjoyed the characters also with this game. I enjoyed... Many, many people that, like, Gat was a classic to me. I liked, I love Johnny Gat in this game. 
he made you feel like, you know, he would he could have kicked your ass and taken your spot, but he respected you enough to give you the spot. And that's what I liked about it was it felt like a family in this game. Like you you wanted to protect your family and you wanted to keep them going. I sound like a mob boss right now. Protect your family, okay? <laughs> and so this game to me made me go, wow. And I I am waiting for a new game to be out for anything. I still have to pick it up for the Switch. I still have to pick up the other ones, but for me, the classic will stay on the Xbox 360 just for the simple fact that this was the system that I played the most of and this was the game that will stay forever in my lifetime and I will never get bored with it. Okay everybody, that was just some a few of the classics that were in my lifetime list. I'm gonna tag anybody who wants to be tagged. If you want to make a response video, shoot a response video and post it online. Tag me on Twitter so that I can see it. But basically, that's my time guys. So remember, stay safe out there, keep on gaming everybody, and as always, find some lifetime games. Catch you next video. Linda the gamer girl, she's here, she's playing games. Linda the gamer girl, she's here, she's playing games.